Yo, what is up guys? Jamie from Jamie's Detailing. Today I'm going to be giving you guys my tips and tricks for detailing during the winter. Some stuff that you guys can do to not only stay a little bit more comfortable, but to avoid some common problems with detailing throughout the winter. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump straight into it. Detailing during the winter can be extremely challenging. Even right now, it is like literally 21 degrees out, guys, here in Aurora. I live just outside Chicago, and it gets extremely cold here to the point where I'm really not trying to detail at all anymore outside. So my first tip for you guys for mobile detailing is just because you guys are mobile detailers does not mean that you guys need to be working out in people's driveways and at out in the street okay during the winter it is totally okay to say no to those clients who don't have a space that's conducive to mobile detailing and limit your guys' services to the clients that actually have a garage space a warehouse at their work that you guys can work in there are a ton of clients out there that have spaces that are totally conducive that you guys can actually get your job done as a detailer and um of course, you may have to do things like use a rinseless wash instead of foaming down the car or, you know, all sorts. There's some little things like that that you guys are going to have to do when you're working in other people's spaces, especially indoors. But it is way it is it's such a much more pleasant experience just saying no to people that don't have a space that's conducive to detailing whether instead of trying to you know push through a 30 degree day when you guys are trying to spray or foam down a car or whatever stuff is freezing to it you're doing an interior and the seats aren't drying or literally you have different lines that you're running out to your client's vehicle that are freezing or you know whatever the case may be guys there is so much stuff that can go wrong when you're work, trying to work outside and freezing cold temperatures. So personally, I do not do it at all. That's the hardest part for me is saying no to different clients and saying, I'm sorry, I can't do a detail for you right now. But we can always put them on a waiting list so that when it comes to March, April, when we get some decent days, they can be the, one of the first people that we're out detailing. So I always give people the option of that waiting list if they don't have a spot, uh, space that's conducive for us to actually detail. So I know it sucks, but don't be afraid to say no to different clients, even if they are clients that you guys have had all year and now you're having to say, hey, we're it's winter time, we can't detail for you because you don't have a space conducive for us. I know it sucks, but I promise you guys, if you guys do good work and you guys have are you know up front with your clients, your clients are gonna stick with you. They're gonna be right back there in March, April when you guys start things back up again. Most people are, in fact, going to, a lot of people that are going to be calling you guys for detailing, they are going to have a garage space or they will have a spot for you guys to detail or they might even have a friend that will let you get, that they can bring their vehicle over to a friend's house and you can do their vehicle over there. So you won't find, you won't hear about the options unless you ask for them. So make sure you're asking for those options and saying no to the people that you have to say no to. It is what it is and yeah, that's one of the biggest things that you guys got to do to get through the winter. Step number two, guys, or advice number two, that is dress the part for mobile detailing. Um, even last week, guys, I was doing some details and it was dr dropping down into like the 42, 40, 38, you know, and even then, guys, it starts getting extremely cold. As soon as you're getting close to 32 degrees, you're really starting to have your hands are getting cold extremely quick, all of that kind of stuff. So make sure that you guys are dressing the part. If you guys want, Make sure you guys are wearing extra thick nitri nitrite, nitrile, whatever. Make sure you guys are wearing extra thick rubber gloves. Um, this will having keeping all the water off your hands and having a little bit of uh, thicker gloves for a little bit added insulation is really going to help save your hands during the winter. So I always wear some type of gloves that just keep them dry. Just keeping them dry and keeping the water off of your hands will really do the, your hands won't get torn up so much from you know the freezing water being on there getting all chapped and dry and all that kind of stuff but anyways make sure you guys are dressing the part gloves i always wear like a uh 
a thermal little, I think they call them, uh, a, what are they called? A gator. A gator. So having extra thick gloves, some kind of gator, like a thermal gator that you guys can wear around your neck. I'm going to leave a link down below to all the different thermal clothes that I wear, but make sure you guys are wearing thermals. We used to call them long underwear when I was a kid. I think everybody just calls them thermals now, but you guys could definitely get some type of thermals. Thermals are really going to help insulate you guys and make sure you guys are also dressing in layers because it might be warm during the beginning of the day or a little bit warmer in the beginning of the day. But then when it, once it gets to be, you know, two, three, four o'clock, the temperature could drop like that. So make sure you guys dress in layers. You can always take off a couple layers of clothes and put them back on if you need to. But if you don't have those layers to begin with, it's going to be a pretty miserable detail if you guys are freezing cold the whole detail so make sure you guys are dressing for the detail another huge thing that you guys can use to help stay warm during the winter is throw some of these in your pockets i buy these in bulk on amazon you guys can get these big packs i got the toe warmers and i got the hand warmers so you guys can throw a couple of these in your shoes and you guys can throw a couple of these in your pockets or you can even tuck these in your rubber gloves um, underneath your rubber gloves on the back of your guys' hands. So whatever you guys want to do in order to stay warm, but having some uh, stuff like this is really, really going to help out, um, especially if you're working in non-heated garage spaces and all of that. Aside from dressing for the part, guys, my third biggest tip is to get your guys' cells a heater. Now, I have this big boy right here. This is an M18 Milwaukee heater. This is a propane heater. This is a, I believe they call it a forced induction heater. But these forced induction heaters, these things will heat up a two-car garage in probably 10 minutes. No problem. It'll be up at 60 degrees in 10 minutes. Even on a freezing cold day like today, this will heat up your garage extremely, extremely fast. And that's because not only is it, you know, have a little flame and everything in here, but it's also forcing all that air out with a fan and helping to circulate it in your space. And I love this heater for actual professional mobile detailing, like when I'm at a customer or client's garage, because it heats up super fast and I don't have to wait for uh, something like a radiant heater to actually heat up. It's much cheaper to uh, run like something like a radiant kerosene heater or just a kerosene heater in general. It is a lot cheaper to run, but most kerosene heaters, they just do not put out the same amount of heat as one of these... Uh, propane uh forced induction heaters this thing is crazy crazy good and i love the fact that it's milwaukee and it uses m18 batteries so since it uses m18 batteries and it uses propane i can just hook up a propane tank and uh plug in a battery and i can use this thing literally anywhere i don't need wall power or anything like that now if you guys don't need the battery functionality of it i'm also going to leave a link to a forced induction heater that is from amazon a mr heater one that works really really good and it's less than half the cost of this milwaukee one i kind of have already bought into the milwaukee tool system so buying this wasn't quite as expensive because i didn't need to buy the batteries and everything else. If you guys already have Milwaukee, I would highly, highly recommend getting an M18 heater um, or just get something, right, a regular force induction heater that you can just run an extension cord to and uh, that will power the fan and everything for you guys. But force induction heater is absolutely amazing. Now, the second type of heater that I would recommend is something like this one. This is just a more like a uh, convection heater, a kerosene uh, convection heater. This costs way, way, way less to run a kerosene heater than it costs to run a propane heater. Propane heaters could easily cost you guys 40 bucks a day in propane. This one right here, you can go and get kerosene at your gas station for, you know, three, three, four bucks a gallon. It's super, super cheap for a gallon of kerosene at the gas station. Um, those ones do recommend that you use like the $25 kerosene from, uh, you know, Home Depot or the store or whatever. 
And if you guys want to, feel free and do that. But me personally, I'm probably just going to be running in the future. I'm probably just going to be running the uh, the cheap kerosene in this thing because I see a lot of other people do it and they don't have any issues with it. It doesn't put off any extra fumes or nothing like that. So I think that I'm just going to switch to the regular gas station kerosene that most people would use. It's way, way cheaper than buying it for around 25 bucks for, you know, two and a half gallons of uh, kerosene over at Home Depot or Menards, Lowe's, wherever you guys shop. Having some type of heater to actually heat your client spaces and to heat your own space is extremely crucial, especially if you guys are trying to mobile detail throughout the winter, especially if you guys are in the Chicagoland area like I am, or if you guys are in any of these northern states where it gets super, super cold. Now, along with heaters, guys, another huge tip that I can give to you guys is to get a heater like this. Now, this one's actually on. This is one that I just kind of leave on to help circulate all the, the air and stuff that's in the garage during the winter because um, I do have a radiant heater in here. But uh, this heater right here, guys, this one works phenomenally well to actually put into your uh, detailing rig. So if I'm parking my detailing rig in the, in the driveway overnight or heaven forbid the street, I really don't like parking it in the street because I'm just worried somebody, every once in a while guys, I catch people on the cameras, you know, running through the neighborhood, open up doors and all that, trying to steal shit. I do not want to leave this car outside for that specific reason, but there are a few times every once in a while where I do park this vehicle outside during the winter. And for those situations, guys, I love having a tiny little heater like this guy. Now, this one is from a company called Handy Heater. And I think we got these over at Home Depot for like 20, 25 bucks on sale one year. Like, you know, right before summertime. Um, my dad's home on sale and I think he bought like four or five of them because he loves those tiny little handy heaters. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys can get some type of handy heater or it's some type of tiny little space heater, and I mean a tiny, tiny one, like 1200 watt. 1200 watts 1500 watts maximum um being able to throw a tiny little heater like that actually into your detailing vehicle i put mine on the front seat in the front passenger seat just right there on the floor i can run an extension cord through the window and then i know it's a little ghetto but i can run an extension cord through the front window and then i put my little heater on the floor right there on the passenger floor seat but that's going to keep my whole entire vehicle warm overnight. Even if it's super cold, like below zero those days, the heater in such a small space, it, it, it'll get that car to like 80 degrees, 100 degrees, like nothing. So being able to put some type of heater inside the vehicle, I don't leave it at 80 or 100 degrees either, guys. I usually have the window cracked. That helps kind of circulate all the air in there, keep some fresh air in there. But having some type of heater inside of your guys' vehicle is going to save all of your chemicals from separating once it gets below freezing. So you will read on a lot of the labels for your chemicals that you actually don't want to leave those chemicals in freezing temperatures because as soon as they get in freezing temperatures, the different um, surfactants and everything that they use inside the chemicals are actually going to separate on you. And when they separate, they're pretty much ruined after that point. I don't know if you guys can like mix them up really good. Personally, me personally, I just throw them out. They're not worth keeping after that. Um... And I don't, I don't know if they're really doing the, what they're supposed to do when it comes to cleaning, even if I try to do my best shaking them back up. So anyways, guys, having a heater inside your vehicle is really going to save you guys or can save you guys a ton of headache. Number one, it's going to keep your guys' chemicals from separating. And number two, it's going to keep any of the plumbing that you guys have inside of your vehicle from freezing. So stuff like your pressure washer, your water tank, all that kind of stuff. So having some type of heater in your vehicle, if it has a thermostat, that is even better. Mine does not have a thermostat. Really haven't had any issues with it. It doesn't get that overly hot in there. I usually put it on its third setting. Keeps it above freezing, but at the same time, it's not getting like boiling hot in there or anything. So, but if you, if you did have one with a thermostat, that would be 
way better than not having one without a thermostat. So if you guys are going looking for one, get one with a thermostat, not one that doesn't have. I just have this one already, so that's why I'm using it. But anyways, guys, having a heater not only for your garage space or for the space that you guys are working in, but also having a heater for your detailing rig for those instances when you need to park it outside. Or let's just say you park your detailing rig outside all the time. Being able to actually heat the detailing rig overnight so that it doesn't get below freezing. That way, when you get first out to your first client of the day, you guys can actually you're not going to have to worry about frozen lines or anything like that. You can get straight to work. And the water that's in your car will be like 60 degrees or so, which will actually keep it from freezing on the panels so quickly. So anyways, a heater inside your car, super, super clutch. Those are pretty much my three biggest tips for you guys is number one, don't be afraid to say no to different clients who don't have spaces that are conducive to winter detailing. Number two, guys, dress the part, bring out some hand warmers or whatever you guys got to do and dress in layers. Number three, guys, is have some type of heater for your guys' space and a heater for your guys' detailing rig. That way you guys can keep the, not only all the chemicals and everything in your detailing rig warm so that they don't separate, but also so that you guys can stay comfortable in whatever space that you guys are actually detailing in. And for me, guys, having these three tips right here or following these three tips makes detailing during the winter way more enjoyable and a little bit less dreadful, I guess you could say. But my very first winter detailing, guys, I tried to do a bunch of winter details. I was seeing people doing you know, foaming down cars and stuff. And what I realized is a lot of these people on, on uh, you know, YouTube do not live anywhere close to Chicago that are showing you these winter detailing tips. They don't live <laughs> in places like Chicago. <laughs> I've seen people all over doing videos that uh, Chicago is a whole nother beast when it comes to the cold, guys. If you guys have ever lived here during the winter, then you guys probably know, but we get the lake effect and all that good stuff. But anyways, that is pretty much all that I have for today's video, guys. But if you guys have any other tips, any other tricks for other people who are either weekend warriors detailing in their home garages or us professionals who are out doing mobile details for clients and, you know, maybe only doing 30% of the normal work that we're doing during the uh, summer as we do in the winter. But honestly, guys, if you guys can stay out there during the winter, I would definitely suggest doing it. Why take a hit to your business if you don't have to? But at the same time, don't kill yourself trying to, you know, do a detail. It's really not worth it. So follow these three little tips and tricks. If you guys have any other ones for me or any, any other tips for the people in the comments, I would love to hear those and love to get some feedback on that. But that is pretty much all I have for today's video. So I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.